I started the inspiration the same way that I always start the same process, which is to sort of go wide with it and sort of see where things land. Um, in this case, I fell into this whirlpool in the late 60s, which I found to be incredibly exciting. Because there was so much going on, on the one hand, with all of this urgency for many different kinds of changes, many different kinds of tensions erupting, and then having that reflected and empowered by style even in menswear and sometimes especially in menswear and it that style could be playful at times it could be very pointed at times it could be very public and risky at times because it was something that you were wearing out as part of a lifestyle that was identifiable it declared you as part of something an allegiance to something and it made me wonder if style in menswear could still make use of the same potential. If we just needed to put all of that in a nostalgia box and be done with it, or if the reason why I feel like I don't see it as much as I'd like to anymore is for some other reason. What we did here is we sort of looked at that in a number of different specific pieces. One of them, for example, is this N53 original American field jacket, which you would see in a number of different contexts. One is obviously on the protesters themselves who would have been generally a bit younger and they would have purchased it as a surplus item or perhaps inherited it from an older family member, you would also still see it in use in some of the images that were coming out of Vietnam, which were precisely one of the things that they were protesting. It was the same garment being used to articulate two very different things. The inspiration for the leather pants sort of came out of this riot that happened at a Rolling Stones concert when the bouncers who were, or, uh, they were hired for some reason, the Hells Angels, kind of created this tension there, this mixture of universes that erupted into something else. And it's these two universes with very complete style codes meeting and clashing and articulating something. We have obviously the blue velvet, which I love, this electric blue velvet, which I love. We have also partnered with a mill called American Woolen, which has been very committed to bringing back the manufacturing in America of suiting fabrics, and we partnered with them on a number of fabrics in this, uh, which I'm very excited about. We have been using a little bit more organic cottons and hemps. It's been interesting for a company of our size to really make a move on that. We have some corduroys happening. Again, I do love corduroys. They're traditionally like a very hard wearing, working kind of fabric. Um, and in that way, it very much fits into the sort of style language of Freeman Sporting Club, which had its roots really in this American workwear and American made tailoring aesthetic. We have had so many different kinds of customers and I really find that wonderful and incredibly challenging. We've had the great luck to see our Made to Measure programs grow very well over the last number of years. Rather than dictate fashion down to help someone who's interested in creating a style for a purpose or creating a style personally for themselves um, and in many ways being this smaller neighborhood store who serve all kinds of different guys, and occasionally women. It helps keep everything very grounded in that these are items that people should be taking into their wardrobe, taking into their lives, and hopefully in a way that they're excited about, and building their own things with them, and using them in their own ways.